we'll come back for two more examples of finding derivatives involving inverse trig functions. Again, I provided the derivative formulas without the chain rule if the given function is not a composite function, and the derivative formulas with the chain rule if the given function is a composite function. Notice if we take a look at the derivative formulas with the chain rule, u would be equal to the inner function, and therefore the derivative is a product where the first factor is the derivative of the outer function, and the second factor, u prime, would be the derivative of the inner function. I wanted to include both sets of derivative formulas because I realize some of you watching may not have learned the chain rule yet, so this first example will still be relevant. But I also want to point out that even if we don't have a composite function, if we apply the chain rule, we will still obtain the same derivative because notice how u would be equal to x and therefore u prime would be equal to one, giving us the same derivative function. So looking at our first function, we have f of x equals three times inverse cosecant of x, or if we want three times arc cosecant of x. And because this is not a composite function, we don't have to apply the chain rule, and therefore to find the derivative, we're gonna use this derivative formula here, which means f prime of x is gonna be equal to three times u derivative of inverse cosecant of x, or arc cosecant of x, which would be negative one divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of the quantity x squared minus one, which means our derivative function would be equal to negative three divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of the quantity x squared minus one. But again, I do think it's important to emphasize but I also think it's important to emphasize that if we have learned the chain rule, we're never wrong to apply the chain rule if we're not sure. So for example, in this case, since the inner function would be x, notice if we let u equal x, the derivative of u with respect to x would just be one, and therefore u prime is equal to one. So if we did use this derivative formula here, we would obtain the same derivative function. So if we're ever not sure whether we need to apply the chain rule or not, it's always best to apply the chain rule, and then if u prime is equal to one, this is just telling us that the chain rule was not needed. Looking at our second function, we have g of x equals four times inverse secant of five x to the fourth, or four times arc secant of five x to the fourth. In this case, notice how we do have a composite function where the inner function would be five x to the fourth. So we do have to apply the chain rule to find our derivative function, and therefore, we'll apply this derivative formula here. So we'll go ahead and let the inner function be equal to u. So if u is equal to five x to the fourth, we'll also need u prime, which is the derivative of the inner function, which would be, what, 20 x to the third. Which means g prime of x is gonna be equal to four times the derivative of inverse secant u, which is gonna be one divided by the absolute value of u, which would be the absolute value of five x to the fourth. But since this exponent here is even, this will always be positive, so we can drop the absolute value. Then we'd have the square root of u squared minus one, or five x to the fourth, squared minus one. This would be the derivative of the outer function times u prime or the derivative of the inner function, which we already found as 20x to the third. Now let's go ahead and simplify and then find this product. We'd have g prime of x equals, well the five and the 20 simplify. Notice how this is simplified to one, this is simplified to four. And then x to the third divided by x to the fourth would simplify. This is simplified to one. This was simplified to x to the first which means the derivative function would be 16 divided by x times the square root of five x to the fourth squared. Well, five squared is 25. X to the fourth squared is x to the eighth minus one. So this would be our derivative function. So for these two examples, we first looked at a pretty basic example where the chain rule was not required and then our second example, where we did have to apply the chain rule to find our derivative correctly.
i hope you found these two examples helpful.